uh, Daniel O'Leary, and I've written um, this uh, wee book. It's called The Happiness Habit. And uh, you may be wondering why have I written it? Well, the reasons are very basic. In fact, I did it for myself more than for anybody else, because um, to survive, um, to keep my sanity, to keep my faith maybe, um, because it's easy to get a little bit um, uh, unbalanced, I think, a um, little bit out of touch with life. It's easy to get a bit uh, maybe depressed. Anyway, um, one of the f so these these are in my mind a lot. I think of them every day. In fact, some of them. And let me just mention um, a few to you. One is the need I have a feeling that I'm always loved. I suppose that there is a love in the world, um, and that I'm sustained by that love, and that it's there whether or not I am. Um, I do anything about it. In fact, there's nothing I can do to make that love more present or less present. Some people might talk about God, um, about God loving us unconditionally, extravagantly. For me, this is awfully important. The old world we have is pretty um, um, dangerous, I suppose, and fragile. So let me read anyway one of the, um, these brief extracts. Do you believe that you are unconditionally loved by love itself, no matter what? You allow it to overwhelm you, trusting it for the pure gift that it is. Fragile human love is mainly conditional, but I'm talking about an unconditional love that never judges you or wants to be judged or to change you in any way. It's always around you, it's always within you, at the very core of your being. You may find this difficult enough to believe, um, but I think it's awfully important that we do. Um, and of course, as you know, loving or being loved is never easy. If you're there to love, uh, be prepared to grieve. Then, when I sort of sit and think about the way things are going, I often find a great old fear in myself. Um, and this fear is it's in all of us, of course, but sometimes it's, um, we feel it quite strongly. And uh, I, I struggle with this fear because it makes you, it diminishes you. And um, I, they say it is one of the biggest blockages to the unfolding, to the blossoming of ourselves that there is. Um, and so I wrote a little bit and uh, read it um, to remind myself of the importance of courage. Like courage is the most beautiful gift to have. When I find that surge of courage coming through me, I really, I really feel like flying. Anyway, this is what I have written about fear. Here in number four. Fear is a crippling thing. It diminishes your mind and body. It shrivels your soul. Do you want to live in fear or in freedom? Everybody is afraid to some extent. But for some of us, it gets really serious. And one thing is, it's not by attacking it or banishing it um, that you overcome it. It's by taking it into you and transforming it. That's what gives the power. You transform your, your fear into a new kind of energy. And that's when, that's when your life somehow is set, free, is set free. You have a new purpose. And that's what courage is. Um, and one last word about fear. If you just think of most of our fear is imagined. F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real. This is what I have written here. False evidence appearing real. We imagine it and we tell stories about it. And, and in fact, it's really due to a kind of fantasy or imagination within us. And then another key, a little bit of insight that I uh, find helps myself and the people I meet every week and I speak with and share with um, is the ability to let go. They say that at the heart of every kind of culture and every religion and every self-help book, that notion of being able to let go is a key, a key gift within our, within our psyches. And let go. Let go of what? Let go of almost everything. We hang on to stuff and it really festers within us. Um, let go of hurts, past hurts, um, present hurts. Let go of family stuff, wills, land. Um, let go of, uh, of all, all kinds of fears. Let go of, of uh, resentment. It's linked with forgiveness. If we cannot forgive, I'm afraid, 
we cannot grow in humanity or in fullness of being, and so on and so forth. The little book contains uh, just those words of advice to me or to those people I share with. Um, uh, what say about wounds, the suffering in your life, the pain in your life. The big question here is how can you somehow transform the pain, the grief, the loss, the suffering into something positive? Like it will either, I think, damage your soul or diminish your humanity, or it will actually, again, set you free to fly. How do you turn your wounds into sacred wounds? How do you turn that darkness into light? And so on for, for the other um, little thoughts and little daily reminders. So I wish you, I wish you um, um, great joy uh, with every step you take on this um, happiness habit. So blessings on you and blessings on all of us.